So that's why I want to say then what's the problem? Now, then the problem is what if you have the LDD? So that is a problem for old technology. So I told you earlier, what does a transistor look like? Right, I have a slide earlier. This is the gate and this is N plus source. This is N plus drain, which is okay, but we also have something called LDD. Okay, now this part, I only briefly mentioned the light lead top drain is, has a low concentration. For example, this one, we can go to 1E20 or above. Here is pretty often to be 1E17 or 1E18 at most. And now you see that, 1E70, 1E18. If you go to low temperature, so let's look at this LD lean first. Remember that we say when you go to low temperature, this is on the right LD lean, linear mode, means a low drain, gate, low drain bias, okay? This is, for example, I forgot what they use in this paper, but for example, let's say, 50 minute volt, very low voltage. When you go to low temperature from a room temperature, they increase. Can you tell me why it increase? Why the current increase when you go to lower temperature? Scattering. We just learned last time, he says scattering. Yeah, what type of scattering? Phonon scattering, yes. Because we have less and less Full-on scattering because less lattice vibration. So what happened to that less scattering? You increase the mobility, right? So this is basically saying that mu phonon increase. Okay, fine. But then once you go lower than 100 Kelvin, they just go down and eventually almost reach zero current. The only explanation is that you have a lot of resistance. And why? That is because of the LDD got freeze out. Like what we said earlier, right? So I explained so many things. The main thing you need to take back is a low temperature, low doping, freeze out, just like an insulator. Now then, now you tell me. On the left, I have the ID set. In this case, we might have VD, let's say, equal to five volts. I don't know what it is in the paper. Again, it keep going up because full-on scattering reduced, but it continue to go up at very low temperature. Why? Uh, wasn't it in the last lecture there was also scattering? Yeah, but, but, but look, uh, uh, yes. But, but however, yeah, that's good. So he said that, well, yeah, for why this is not due to the increase in Coulomb scattering. That is possible, but now it can explain by this curve. What happened to this ID set? It also increased as the temperature reduced because the phonon scattering reduced, but it continued to reduce, to increase at lower temperature, right? If it is due to Coulomb scattering, then I will expect it to reduce also. Right, a high voltage. Make sense? No, uh, different drain voltage. Let, let's only look at these two. Both of them are VG equal to three. The dash line is linear mode, 50 millivolt. And then the solid line is saturation mode, five volt, for example. So now if it's Coulomb scattering, the reduction is due to Coulomb scattering, then this one should go down also, right? So that is a very good question, right? Now, but I, I try and say, say no, because it will go up. Then what are the possible explanation? Why saturation goes up, but linear mode go down? The difference is that one has high drain and one has a small drain voltage. Uh, besides that, what are the possibility, right? Uh, when I have a larger voltage, it means I have a larger electric field. When you have a larger electric field, what happens? What oh, happened? Oh, yeah. yeah, larger electric field, you have this field enhanced emission and tunneling. 
So as a result, the free cell effect is not that strong, right? So from here, then we will say that uh, your LDD is not freezing out because of the field enhanced effect, okay? Now, so there is a model for this, which is easy to understand. The source string resistance equals to the uh, one over the percentage of ionization. So ND plus is how much got ionized, right? You have this equation. You don't need to memorize it. I just copy for a reference. If in the future it's useful, do some useful hand calculation. But definitely it tells you that the electric field in LE, LDD, LDD, electric field in LDD, right? So let me be specific. What, what is this? Here, you have an electric field, right? Which actually should point in another direction because electric field go from positive to negative. This electric field is ELDD, okay? This factor gamma depend exponentially on the electric field, right? So that's why when I only increase the voltage by 10 times, maybe let's say electric field also increase by 10 times, the gamma is so large that you just fully ionize this one because this is very big, okay? That is one thing. And here again, show another plus, right? Again, this plus means the percentage of ionization. Right? So, yeah, when you go to lower temperature, your, your ionization is less, but once I have a large electric field, they all jump up to, where, to be very high. You don't need to go to 100%. 50% is large enough. Think about that. You were talking about 1E18. Now it's only 5E17. Yes, the resistance is increased, but it's not a big deal because LDD does not... Uh, contribute 100% of the total resistance, right? Yeah, question? Advanced processes, so they also use LDD? Now they don't use LDD, but you need to be careful. For example, they may have some source string extension, but yeah, so this is no longer a main problem. So when I do the measure and such a, and also depends, for example, I have a 65 nanometer chip, right? The uh, the high voltage device has a very bad free cell effect because they, they do have a wider spacer, right? And the low voltage, low voltage device, I actually feel the free, free cell from the substrate. So here I only talk about the LDD. Remember the substrate can got free cell also. I, I got problem with that. I cannot get uh, accumulation in the CV measurement, but inversion is not a problem. Okay, yeah. Um, sorry, can you remind, I think you mentioned it, what's the reason for LDD to enhance the... LDD is to smooth out the electric field to enhance the reliability because if you don't have LDD, you have a very high electric field and cause hot carrier injection in the old technology. Yeah. This is during manufacturing. Yeah, but this does not appear in the mass. You don't have an LDD mass because it's so-called self-aligned. So we don't have time to go into the details. They will do something such that this is so-called spacer. LEDD only form under the spacer. So you don't need a mass. Okay. Okay, so uh, then uh, another thing I want to talk about, continue to talk about this free cell effect. This is uh, instructional, not important actually, but instructional. So consider that I have a transistor. Right, and then I apply a pulse to it. So what does it mean? Maybe I go from zero volt to two volt very fast, which is larger than the VTH. Then what happened? You turn it on, right? From zero to two volt. It was zero, and then I measure the ID. I measure the current, right? I connect to VDD and I measure the current. What does it mean? It means just like this, right? I had a gate, I have source string, and then I have zero volt. So at this point, uh, maybe it's all P, accumulation, let's say, right? Extreme, uh, we don't, we try not to mess up, we just call it accumulation at this moment. Then I go to two volts. 
What happens when you have two volts, which is larger than VTH? You go to inversion. But before inversion, what do you have? You have depression. So you have, you're supposed to have depression first, which is QD. And then when you have large enough, you will get this inversion QI. Correct? Now at room temperature, at 300 Kelvin, fine. Then the total charge I have QI is going to be equals to C ox times VG, right? And instead of calling it VG, I just call it 2 volt, 2 minus VTH, right? I say minus VTH because I only care about the inversion charge, right? I do have some of them go to depletion. Now, but however, at 4 Kelvin, for example, at low temperature, there's no time to form depression. Because what is the meaning of depression? What is the meaning of depleting that layer? Do you remember? <coughs> it was whole, right? And then we push away the hole. Push away the hole means you need to ionize the hole. Because they are not fully ionized. Some of them were not fully ionized, right? Because of this. You might be at this level, right? Maybe only 80% got ionized. Yeah, you push it away. I still have 20% in the trap. At room temperature, once you push the hole away, then follow the statistic. The other will just jump out very quickly. But at room temperature, there's no time to form Com I, I should say complete decision, depression. I cannot say no time to form depression because some of them already gone, right? To form a complete depression. Because it takes time for whole to, or maybe I would say unionized holes, unionized holes to ionize. Right? You push out the hole, and then I'm hoping all those still in the trap just ionize it. But no, it's too cold for me. I don't have energy. It takes a long time to ionize. So because of this, then. QD is small, okay? And because QD is small, but I have the same voltage, right? Then I must need to, QI need to increase because I have the same voltage. I need to sustain the same amount of charge. Maybe I was not clear here. QI, plus QD equals to C ox times two, right? The total voltage across this capacitance times the capacitance is equal to the total charge, QI plus QD. Now, because you cannot ionize them, then uh, I have less QD, then my QI is larger, right? So, as, so that's why when I turn on this transistor, I have some excess current because I have more QI than normal. And then as time co goes by, they start ionizing, so QD increase, then QI will reduce. Then eventually, you will just settle to the normal current level. Oh, because this is excess current from... Excess current, current. yes. Um, is this useful? Maybe not useful for your midterm and exam, but it's very instructional, instructive, because if you can understand what I'm talking about, then you have a good idea about incomplete ionization. Right. Any questions regarding this? Oh, is this like a ratio? Uh, excess is that how, let, how, about, how about say how much percentage more than the steady state current, right? I, actually, I don't know. I, I forgot what is the uh, label. You, 
I, I did quote the book, right? This one you can borrow. I think maybe can download from our library. I don't know. Uh, whether it's 1% or 1.2x, I forgot. But again, this is not important for our class. The point is that these are all old, old technologies, right? Yes, I, I Uh, yeah, go to 11 point. Yeah, for cryogen, that can, can be a problem. Uh, but the good thing is if you go to FinFET, right, the depression charge is very small. So I think the largest problem is between 65 and 45 nanometer. Yeah, about device. Yeah. But good to understand this, right? Because when you uh, analyze some new phenomenon in the future, this will be useful. Okay, so actually, I spent too much time. Um, so, uh, one more thing I want to say is about the substrate bias, which I did not get a chance to uh, explain. The threshold voltage actually depends on the substrate bias. So you have a transistor. But this is important concept because we can borrow it directly to FinFET and SOI later. So you have a transistor and then you have a gate. But do not forget that we also have a substrate bias, Vs. We can need to bias the substrate. If you try to reverse bias it, means that you apply, for example, negative substrate bias correspond, for example, Vsb uh, less than zero, your Vt is going to increase. Okay, so you can increase the threshold voltage by biasing the substrate. Uh, Please trust me, we don't have time to derive this equation. This is probably mentioned in EE221 or 128, okay? But trust me, but I just want to provide another view why this is the case. You can think of this as this, right? Again, on the top, I have a capacitor. No, that's not how I draw it. So on the top, this is the gate. So I do have a capacitor here. This is C ox, correct? And you try to control the inversion layer. But I also told you earlier, we have the depression layer here also. This form another capacitor, which can control the channel. Just think about that. Right, I, I can control the channel by top and bottom bias, the middle part. One is through the insulating oxide, another is through the insulating depleted region. And, and that, that's what I want to say, I hope you uh, agree. And we talk about GM, right? GM is the GM, the how much current uh, how much drain current will change for a unit change of the gate voltage? Remember that? Gm equals to partial ID, partial Vg. So if the substrate can control... Oh, sorry, uh, this might be confusing, right? This this is B. No one say that I label it wrong. Uh, bulk. We, we mean that this is bulk, okay? Okay, we don't use Vs because this becomes the source and drain, right, Vb? So if it can control, isn't that it should have a Gm also? So it has a Gmb, which is equal to partial Id, partial Vb. Okay, and there is a relationship between them because the control is due to the capacitance. It's just equals to Cd, the depression capacitance, divided by the C ox times GM. Okay, because they're both controlled by the capacitance, right? Then uh, hand wavingly, the GM, how much you can control by the bulk 
Of course, it depends how large your capacitance is. If you are much larger than the gate offs, C offs, then of course, then you will be have a larger GM, larger than my GM, right? That isn't typically GM. Typically, it is because this is thicker than the oxide. That you're right. I, I I'm giving an example in the opposite direction. So if you have a smaller depletion capacitance, then of course your control on the channel is less, which is expected, right? And you don't want the substrate to have a better control than the gates because after all the transistor is supposed to be controlled by the gate. So that is what brings us to here the so-called King effect. So what happened to this uh, King effect? I got too many things. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you can. And actually in analog circuit to, uh, in analog circuit, you, all, you can see something like this. When you do the layout, uh, you do the circuit, you, this is VG, right? And then you might actually have a transistor like a circuit like this. Now your VS is not at ground, but you might connect this one to ground. Uh, then your v, VBS is negative. Then you have a higher voltage, right? And then you may say that I want it connect to the VS directly. But then that can be can have other issue actually. Yeah. Title the source is actually uh, layout wise better, right? But uh, uh, there's a reason I certainly forgot. Uh, sometimes you don't want to tie to the source, just yeah for the performance. Okay, so there are such situations. Of course, then some people decide some special circuit really even varying the VB. Oh, so you have different choice, right? Remember, you can attach and separate. When you attach, then they are tied together. Yeah, so that's why you have two choices. Yeah, good. Okay, then what I want to talk about is the King effect. Remember what's IDVD again? Drain current as a function of VD at different VG, right? So this was the curve we studied earlier. Remember this IDVD? And we say that the slope is what? The output impedance, right? Very good. RO equals to partial uh, VD, partial ID. And we want RO to be large because this is important for our circuit gain in analog circuit. Now, but if you cool it down to the low temperature, you will see something like this. Suddenly it jump up, particularly when it is at low temperature, it will jump up earlier. And this definitely has a very bad RO and also kind of unpredictable, right? So this has a very small output, then your circuit won't work well. But why is this? So this is very simple. Let me draw the cross section. So this is again the transistor. So I, I keep drawing the cross section. I hope that you know this very well now. This is VG. Now, you just asked me about the contact, right? So the contact, we may put this as a P plus. So this is the bulk, right? Now I call this source, this string, okay? So swap, okay? The right is swap. So when you say the contact at uh, tie, then these two have a metal one connected together. When you say detach, they are not connected together, then you can connect them separately in cadence, right? Now, what happened? This one, you have depletion region, fine. And you say that I have a capacitor, which is CD, which can control the channel. You, I connect this to ground, but there's a distance from here to here. This is not going to be uh, zero ohm when you are at low temperature due to the carrier freeze out. This is going to be large. It can be pretty large. And 
there will be some so-called impact ionization currents we don't discuss now, but you have some very tiny current flowing through here, very tiny, okay? I call it I sub substrate current. A current passing through a large resistor, what do you get? Potential drop. So this part is not one, this might be 0 0.2 volt, right at where you have the action, right? So as a result, you do have this delta ID due to the change of the VD, uh, the, uh, this voltage times the transconductance due to the body. Okay, now, and then uh, this current only occurs when you have a large VD. Here you start have the so-called in impact ionization, which I will discuss in the future slides. This impact ionization cause I sub. And because it has I sub, you have this I out drop. And then your effective VB, right? It really doesn't matter how you bias it. Important is here, your effective VB will increase. And once you increase, then your VT actually reduce. Because here I say that if it is negative, then your VTH increase. Now you increase, it means it's positive, the VTH reduce. And then you get a big change in the ID. So that is so-called king effect because you have this king in the measurement. Yeah. So this I sub current is coming from the drain, right? So yeah. So part of the drain current is going through the source and some small fraction comes out of the I sub. You can say that, but the source of the current, the carrier is not the regular current due to inversion is because impact ionization, which I will explain later. This is a PN junction. Suppose you don't have any current going from N to P when it is reverse bias, because this is five volt, this is zero volt, right? And why you have current? That is due to impact ionization. And if the voltage is large, then you will initiate the impact ionization. Yeah, so which I will discuss very soon. It is coming from the drain. I, I just want to separate. It is from the drain, but, 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 okay, but then, like, how can, like, can a DC current go through a series cap? Or is this cap C D really not really? No, no. This is it does not go through the cap. Again, this cap is just a depression region, and this current does not go through this cap. It actually go through from this M P junction. It also doesn't matter. It go through this depression region. The point is, you have a current going from the N to P under reverse bias. Yeah. Okay. Maybe hold on. Uh, two more slides. I will explain what is in impact ionization. But the main point here is I just again this is a very instructive, right? If you understand that you understand freeze out effect well. Again, uh, this is uh, because think about if it's very conductive, it is not freeze out. If P is not freeze out, you don't have this problem because this is always at zero. But because it's resistive, so if you have a little bit current going through, you are going to bring up the potential here so that you reduce the effective threshold voltage. And that's why you have a jump in the current. Okay, I will explain more. This one, let me go through very fast. Basically, this is high temperature, 300 Kelvin. Again, this is an IDVG curve, right? And this is 100 Kelvin. IDVG curve, again, what is that? We increase the gate voltage and then we measure the drain current, but it is in log scale, so the difference is very large. This is six orders of magnitude, means one million times of difference. What is this? This is the so-called punch through current. It is not the impact ionization, but again, let's look at the transistor structure. N plus, N plus, where at the off state, right, Vg equal to zero. I suppose to have only P here. I don't have inversion. There's no channel going from left to right. There should be no current, right? But if you look at this path, let's say this is zero, this is five volt. You look at this path, which is far away A, A dash, 
which is far away from the gate outside, at which it has no control, it has very weak control. You actually see a band diagram like this. It is related, but I'm only talking about punch through current. Drain induced barrier loading is just talking about I get more punch through current. Uh, I have lower threshold voltage, but that is not what we're trying to talk about. I only talk about more leakage current. Yeah. But, but yeah, but it's related to drain induced barrier loading. They are, they, they are relevant. So if this is zero volt, this is zero volt. Are you okay that you go from. This is A, A dash. Are you okay about this band diagram? Yeah, not, not yet. I assume zero volt, right? So then you are symmetric, right? So your electron cannot go through this barrier when it is very low. This is just like what we discussed earlier on top of the channel is the same. But now I'm talking about a path that is below. It's the same MPN. Now, as you said, what if it is 5 volt? Then you might have something like that. Don't know how to draw it. Because it's so deep. So, yeah, I think it makes sense to do this. It is so deep in the substrate. It's so deep in the substrate, when I try to lower this guy, at the same time, I will pull down the barrier. Just think about the rubber band, right? Uh, I pull on the both sides. If no, no one holding at the middle or the holding force is weak, it will go down. Then I got a lot of current going, in, going from here, right? Again, a lot is talking about the leakage. A lot more, yeah, 1 million, I mean, 10 times, 100 times more, but still small. But this is the so-called punch-through current. Right, so the current going through here is called I punch through. OK. Now, if you go to cryogenic temperature, what is it good? Yes. Because although you have lower barrier, but your electron is less energetic, they cannot go through this barrier easily. So this is a very lousy transistor at 300 Kelvin because my turn off current is 1 e minus 6. My on current is 1 e minus 3. It's only 1,000 times. But if I run it at cryogenic temperature, it goes to less than 1 e minus 13. It becomes a very good transistor from this punchful current perspective. Make sense? Yeah, again, just for me statistics, the barrier is lower, I can go through, but now because it's so cool, even a small barrier is difficult for me to go through. It's consistent with the ionization case, right? So let's talk about the impact ionization. This is also something uh, useful and related to the liability. What is impact ionization? Right. So let's think about this. You know what is a PN junction, right? If no, then you need to just trust me. When you draw the band diagram of a PN junction as zero bias is like this. This is P, this is N, and this is the Fermi level. This is at zero bias. Is this okay, right? You have Fermi constant Fermi level because it's constant potential and left is uh, P, your Fermi level is close to the valence band, right is N, close to the conduction band, and in the middle you have smooth transition, which is the depletion region, because the Fermi level is more or less at the middle of the band. So you don't have much electrons or uh, N-hole, right? Now if I try to reverse bias it, it means I apply positive voltage to the right-hand side. Then I will get something like this. I still have the P on the left, I have the N on the right, but now it's not at uh, thermal equilibrium, so I only have quasi-Fermi level, which I'm not going to draw it in the uh, 
depression region, right? But the point is, do we have a current in this case? In order to have current, electron needs to flow from the left because this is the one that has no barrier. Hole needs to flow from the right. And which also makes sense because I have 10 volt here, I want to attract electron. I have zero volt here, I will attract hole. But how much electron do I have in this region? Do you have a lot or very few? Very few, really, really few, right? So you feel only have some leakage, small leakage current. Fine, so very small leakage current. So still just leakage current. But I do have some electron, one or two, right? very few. So this electron is going to run from left to right, but then when I'm running, I may hit a lattice. Then I lose my energy. And I continue to run under electric field, I may hit the lattice again. I lose the energy, right? So lose energy by scattering, for example, right? It can be many different types of scattering, but the phonon is vibrating, I lose my energy. So I keep accelerating, right? I may lo lose my energy. And then maybe here, I run to here, and then I uh, lose more, whatever. That's it. Then I have this uh, scenario. This is at 300 Kelvin. Now I know to better label it. Now I use blue color, right? What if you are at 4 Kelvin? Everything is the same. You still have the same band structure, okay? You still have N here, you still have P here. I actually still have very few electrons and maybe even less electron than before. I have even less electron than before because of the Fermi Dirac statistics, right? But I may have one or very few. But however, because I am at low temperature, when I was accelerating, I actually don't lose my energy that often. And then maybe once I lose energy, I lose a lot because here I have a lot of energy accumulator, right? This is band diagram picture, but just think about a real space picture. If you don't hit anything, then you just keep accelerating, accelerating until you lose hit something. And then you are so energetic, you actually generate an electron hole pair because you knock the lattice and generate an electron here and then at the same time and hold here at the same point, right? From lattice point of view, just break the bond. And then what happened to this guy? Well, then I use whip to here. And then at the same time, let's call this one, two, three, four. It accumulates a lot of energy and then it also generates another electron hole pair. Not, not balancing, so I did not draw it well. Uh, you have another electron. And then, actually, I did not draw it well. It actually happened at the middle. And then you will keep multiplying. This is just like avalanche. That is what people also call it avalanche instead of just imperialization. But this actually happened at room temperature also. i just giving you an extreme case. What I'm trying to say is that it is easier to have avalanche or impact ionization, uh, which is the huge current under reverse bias of the PN junction at low temperature. It's easier because it's more difficult to lose energy. So you can accumulate a lot of energy. OK? Yeah, isn't it with the linear effect for yeah, there is a, oh, no, no, a uh, sinner dial is the tunneling. So there are two types of dial, right? One is avalanche dial, another sinner dial. Sinner dial is more due to tunneling instead of this impact ionization. Yeah, so that is the way to distinguish whether this is a sinner effect or impact ionization. 
Based on this, you will see that you have a lower breakdown at lower temperature because you don't lose energy easily. And from this, that's how power device people use this to prove that their device uh, ever launched device. Because when they increase the temperature, the breakdown voltage is actually higher, more difficult to break down. But signal down is due to tunneling, it is opposite. At higher temperature, it's easier to get tunnel because you can think about the electron has more chance to hit the barrier. So temperature can use to distinguish the impact ionization and signal signal effect. What, what he's talking about is this. Exactly, yeah. If it's the impact ionization, I think uh, maybe it's good to learn this. <laughs> If you try to look at the breakdown voltage, this is uh, I, this is the V, right? You have very small, small current, and suddenly it goes up. That is called breakdown, for those who don't know what we are talking about, right? And if it is impact ionization, you will see something like this. This may be 300 Kelvin, this is 4 Kelvin. It's easier to break down, okay? So this is impact ionization, I dot I. On the other hand, if it is thinner, you will get opposite. This may be 4 Kelvin. This is 300 Kelvin, right? Of course, there are also other mechanisms, like uh, perlocation or real night like, damaging effects, but let's only talk about these two, right? So no need to study center effects, right? Here I'm mostly talking about avalanche impact one electron generate one electron hole pair, then these two electron hole pair will generate another two electron hole pair, and then two become four, four become eight. It's just a multiplication effect, like avalanche on the mountain. Okay? So for, for the stars that are two temperatures, where these diodes? Yeah. If this is, I put in the room temperature, you have this, you have this breakdown curve. If I put it at four Kelvin, you have this breakdown curve. You have a lower breakdown. For example, this is 1,000 volt, this may be 800 volt. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so you need to be careful. You design a circuit, oh, this is very safe. You won't break down to 1,000 volt. And then the, the consumer use it and bring it to Lake Tahoe. And then you break down 950 volt. And that's why you need to have the, this temperature spec, right? You cannot use it uh, in Mojave Desert or whatever. Okay, so why I discuss this? Because here is the something that you will see that we mentioned earlier about impact ionization. Your electric electron, right, in the inversion layer goes to the drain, then you cause this impact ionization. The impact ionization will cause secondary impact ionization, that is like uh, create further particles. So we won't go into the details because then, uh, yeah, too comp uh, we don't have time for this. But if it's a secondary particle, electric fuel at here actually is more vertical. So this hot electron can go to the gate and they might damage your gate outside. As a result, you will have so-called hot carrier degradation. And why it is hot? Now look at this. When I come to here, before it loses the energy, it is many EV above the Fermi level. So it is hot, right? Because if it is room temperature, if it's 26 mini EV, it's equivalent to 300 Kelvin. But this one can be equivalent to 10,000 Kelvin uh, of energy, really. It means that if you heat up the transistor to 10,000 Kelvin, those electron energy is the same as this electron energy. But of course, it's not really hitting you, right? Because now it's particle elementary particle. So this will cause the degradation. And so, and because at low temperature, you have more impact ionization. So as a result, you see that at 77 Kelvin, I actually have more degradation on the GM, the transconductance. Okay, so this is something opposite. Uh, because of time, let me just finish the last one. Maybe uh, this one, let's just skip it. The one I just talked about is the hot carrier, de hot carrier degradation. That your hot electron, you damage the gas outside. So it gets worse at low temperature. But there's something called negative bias temperature instability. 
So it is like this. You have silicon here. Now we look into the details. Uh, this is high K dielectric instead of silicon dioxide, but doesn't matter. The point is that you do have a lot of defect and dangling bond here. When you turn on a PMOS, this is mostly for PMOS. And for PMOS, you have VG less than zero. That's why it's negative, right? Negative bias. At that time, you actually can have some chemical reaction. The whole is going to react with the silicon hydrogen bond and create some defects there. And here show that the trap defect increase as a function of time. Now, if we go to cryogenic temperature, this will not be a problem because this is a chemical reaction. So at low temperature, you actually are going to have less reaction. So NBTI will not be a problem, but HCI can get worse. Okay, so, uh, but too many variables. So if you work in the company, you need to explain them. You always can find some reason why this word, why it doesn't work uh, based on this theory. Okay, so let's stop here. I don't have time to go through SOI.